Welcome to the Recruitment Rollercoaster podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today I'm joined by Laura Briggs, who is the founder of Laura Briggs Recruitment, who are an independent specialist accountancy recruitment business. Laura has worked in recruitment for over five years and has always worked within the accountancy space. Laura, thank you for joining me. Thank you. How are you? I'm well, yeah, really good to be here. Good. As an, as an avid listener of the no. Recruitment Rollercoaster podcast. Is, 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 that, is that weird for you to be like, okay, I'll listen to this and then now you're a guest? It's the closest I think I'll ever get to being a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, look, there's, there's no barriers to entry to be on this podcast. I think it's all about having an, a, a place where people can hear different stories, right? Nice. Um, but where I always like to start, which you should know, how did Laura Briggs enter the world of recruitment? Let, let's start there. Yeah, ease me into it. Um, so I, I actually trained in nutrition and I was a nutritionist for babies and children in London for about three, four years. And I just got to the stage where I was sick of public sector. It's a really, it's a, it's a crap place to be really if you're driven and you want to go places. Um, so I got into a bit of a rut. And I ended up going to a careers coach and I said, wow. I, don't, I don't want to study. I don't want to go back and study. I don't have any transferable skills, but I like people and I really want to make some money. And she was she, you know, pretty much said, what about recruitment? Or you could be an estate agent. <laughs> and I thought, well, I could be a recruiter. And nobody around me thought I could do it. Like everyone was like, Laura, you're not a recruiter. You'll be terrible at this. But I threw caution to the wind. I went to read. They snapped me up in their accountancy team. Um, and yeah, it kind of went from there. Okay. Why did the people around you, why did they think you wouldn't be good at, good at it? Because I think there's a sort of a cliche of what a salesperson is like, maybe a bit pushy, you know, I'm, I'm confident in a social sense, but when it comes to sort of business, you know, I, I just, you know, I'd worked in an NHS nutrition department before I hadn't done anything of the sort and it did seem a bit random. Um, but that's the thing I think, you know, there's not one kind of person who can do recruitment recruitments, you know, a service and you can do it many, many different ways. So I think I just have some of the soft skills that obviously make me successful. How, how old was you, if you don't mind me asking at that point, when you changed career, basically? It was 2014, so I would have been 26, 27. Let's talk about that. How, dif- how difficult was that? Because, like, you know, we all, have, we all have this vision in our head that when I'm 26, I want to be here. What, you know what I mean? And I think that takes a lot for you to be like, you know what, actually... I'm going to check like that. A lot of people don't like you're in recruitment now, right? So you talk people go through this that you speak to, but how, I don't know. How was that? How did you come to the conclusion that, you know what, actually I need, I need to change. And there isn't something I'm not happy with my current circumstances. I think it helped that I sort of felt like I didn't have many options. So I felt like I, you know, was, a clean slate but the thing with recruitment is that I don't know whether the time moves faster or because you can you can do well so quickly you know it's not like other jobs where you have to climb the ranks you have to become a manager you have to do things that way um but now I'm sitting here what 33 and I feel like I've been doing recruitment all my life I I've only done it six years and if I'd just done six years in any other job I feel like I might potentially be at middle manager level probably not um, yeah. But here, I, I have I have my own business. You know, it, it's just totally different. Yeah, fair enough. No, I just respect that because I think a lot of people they they would wouldn't have changed and they wouldn't have done anything right. So yeah. I, I respect that a lot, and I think I think that's what I experienced when I first got my first sales job. Before that, I did all different things from delivering pizzas to working in retail, or whatever. But when you get that real first taste, that actually you get rewarded and merit on your hard work, and you're in complete control of that you never yeah. had that before it's like all right okay <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely I, up for, yeah i'm definitely i can up do for anything that. now i can do anything <laughs> yeah literally so okay so then obviously joined one of the the big brands in yes. recruitment Reed. Yep. so just give us a bit of context so i have so my only when i joined recruitment i joined a small business and my perception of Reed was i go on to to read to obviously find cv so there's a job board element but actual read recruiters, there were some that recruited insurance, which is the space that I recruited in. I just thought it was really high street. Like oh, that, was my, that was my perception. So like people walk in, you get walk-ins, all that. Is that, is that what it was like? 
Totally. I think it's almost, looking back, I think it's a cushioned landing at Reed. Accountancy was a, one of the best teams, the most successful teams in the business. So I was training with a manager who'd been there, you know, for about 30 years. Um, and I think that helped. But also they had the biggest database. They had a great sort of training package. And I think the only thing that they were fighting against was the fact they had this real high street name. Um, and so what they tried to do to differentiate us was have an accountancy team who did sort of salaries up to 35K and then a finance team who did those sort of more senior accountancy roles. Um, but all it caused was a lot of sort of intern infighting. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was really messy. So I think that's one of the things that sort of, sort of made me, made me leave. But yeah, the high street thing, you were always fighting against, try, you know, trying to be seen as somebody who knew what they were talking about and knew they were a specialist. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Re Re Reed is well known and I think that plays in its favour, but it probably doesn't have the same kudos as like a Robert Half or something in terms sure. of accountancy was it um just for context then so you worked to read for how long was it like two and uh three, three and a half years three and a half years sorry yeah, yeah three and a half years and then was it perm that you did or was it all perm all yeah perm? yeah yeah why why do you think why is it that you think that that high is it for me what comes to mind for me is instantly people think it's like super transactional and like the quality isn't as high basically from like from the that comes with the high street like reputation is is that what it is or what what was it you was always trying to convince people that you wasn't well it was different for me because I you know, you know about accountancy practice and how that differs to industry no so industry is when you have a company and they have their own accountant who does their accounts but an accountancy okay. firm is a firm of accountants who do accounts yeah, for, yeah, like yeah. businesses like me for example yeah yeah, that makes sense. yeah so you've got like internal well yeah like yes. internal internal or, and external yeah, yeah yeah cool that's it so I'd been there for about a year, I think, and I hated cold calling. You know, for anyone who's thinking I couldn't be a recruiter, I hate cold calling. I was absolutely terrible. Um, and they, but they saw in me that I, I had other skills, so I was really detail driven. And they always used to say, if you give Laura a job, she will fill it, like even the difficult ones. But I just couldn't pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Why? Why? Let's just because it's that. terrifying. <laughs> I just, I mean, I didn't know what to say. They'd they'd always get the gatekeeper. You know, they they'd never even even if there was a job on their website, they wouldn't admit that you know they're recruiting for it. And I just, I yeah, I just did. I hated it. So um, my manager said, you know, nobody's done a practice desk in ages. It used to be so lucrative, but it's been years. It's it's such a difficult desk, and no one wants to do it. And they said, we think you'll be good at it. So I grew a practice desk from. Um, no, absolutely nothing and by the and this time this is I after left, year one you did that yes this was I was a year in and yeah by the end by a further two years it was at 175k a year so yeah, yeah I just you know that was I didn't focus so much on transactional stuff I was in a really difficult market okay. where you get a candidate and people want them yeah okay that makes sense so practice meaning basically external right so the group yeah, uh, yeah okay accountancy firm that will service different businesses okay so let, let's talk about that then, because for you to go, Laura, that hates cold calling and the business development, which is really common, by the way, I, I hated that. I absolutely shat my pants when I had to start doing that. It's, it's you difficult. Me as be, you would be good, but good doing that. <laughs> oh, I, good I, I, no, I would, the thing is, so it is, it is really weird, right? So what I had to overcome, it's, it's that bit before you make the call. So I'd always have just not the right things, having the right, I wouldn't be having the right internal dialogue before I picked up the call and my relationship with it wasn't right because when I actually got through to people I was actually all right on the phone but it was the sure. bit before that always prevented me from doing more of it if you get what I mean yeah so but even though I'd have like an okay experience and it wasn't that bad or I tried I did okay I, I that was just my difficulty it was like the bit before that I just got in my own head basically um but you had to overcome that if you had to build a new desk basically right so it hasn't been touched for a while reads you've got you work for a brand that's known so surely you had to like what was the plan what was the game plan how did you build this from how did you build it from scratch because it's a different market it's much more candidate -led, like heavily heavily okay. candidate led so i just had to i had to be good at finding candidates and also building their trust it's quite a cliquey it's like all the directors of these firms seem to know each other they're all old boys do you like play golf together that's a <laughs> that is a, a, a massive sweeping sure sure i get what you mean yeah yeah people um, know each other 
Yeah, exactly. So you really had to gain their trust. Um, and the things that I was good at, like writing job adverts that really painted a picture of life and a firm, you know, they didn't sound like all the other job adverts and people responded to me. And I think I just started growing a network and I became known as a bit more of a specialist. I wasn't just an accountancy person. Um, and yeah, so it, it was, it was my other soft skills being, you know, having an eye for detail, being able to write really well and being very personable with people who maybe were a bit, uh, you know, d mistrustful of, of recruiters. Of recruiters, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, play to your strengths, leveraged the candidate network, which I'm then assuming business development and getting clients was easier because what you were specking people out, basically. Oh, yeah. You call them with, you know, a good practice candidate and you just have much more interest. And then you could develop the rate relationship that way. They say, yeah. oh, Laura's sending us decent emails with decent people. And I, I guess I just started making a name for myself. Okay. That makes sense. So by the end of year, by the end of that year, the first year doing the practice desk, hmm. how, how long did it take you? Because one of the common questions that I always get, Laura, is about building a new patch, about building a new desk and the challenges that come with that and people's experience. So you're talking about this now, but how long did you, I don't know if it was an internal thing, but how long did you give yourself to be like, right, I'm going to give this a real go for a year, year and a half before I think about going back to something else or whatever. Like what was the time frame that you gave yourself to be like, I've given this a real good crack. If, if I've got to certain milestones by that point, then I'm going to carry on or not. Like how long did it take do you think to build some momentum? I, just sort of from the get-go they they basically kept me with the uh, we, we worked on an alphabet system so I kept the letters that I had in industry as like a like a bit of a buffer and sure. then I was just doing any practice that I could do but I think I just found so I never was thinking oh I could fail at this but okay. the practice just started picking up so quickly that I was then giving away letters because i didn't want to work that stuff anymore and I'd found but I think certainly by the end of the first year doing practice I must have been on about I don't know 140 150k sure it's fair. a really really lucrative market yeah so, so ga gathered momentum quite quickly yeah um, and was it just you in that team then on your own just doing practice yeah all the other girls did industry so there were five of us in the rest of the team why um why do you think it was you that, so I know obviously we were saying before, didn't we, that obviously you won numerous awards at Reed, mm. pretty competitive landscape. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think, why do you think it was Laura Briggs that was near the top of the leaderboard or won awards? Why was it you over other people, do you think? I think I'm very good at relationship building, like, you know, you know being personable you know not I, I never had I, I never sounded like a salesperson on a call and I know lots of recruiters don't but you know I always I just speak the way that I speak in real life um and I am just I'm <laughs> I'm very type a so you know spinning a lot of plates and being organized and you know following up with people when I need to and doing what I said I would do and you know really having an eye for who was going to be great at a job and those are the things you can't really, t I couldn't explain how I was good at them. They're just, you know, they're just your natural sort of flair, I suppose. Yeah, no, I love that. So why don't we talk about, I mean, where, when did you have that moment then? Or was there a moment when you thought about starting your own business? Have you always thought about starting your own business? Like where did that motivation or entrepreneurial spirit come from? You know what? It was because as, after two years, they realized that I was, making a lot of money and they wanted in um so there was this you know this corner of the business that I'd grown that was you know my it was my corner and I felt very sort of protective of it and they yeah. said yeah yeah thanks for that we'll uh, we'll have that back and we'll get some more consultants in and we'll grow the practice team and I just thought no That's <laughs> no, not for I you. Think, no I no I'm gonna buy a phone and a laptop and I'm sure I can do this myself yeah that was the only that that's the typical thought process isn't it yeah. <laughs> find a laptop I can do this myself I know I think I was such a diva in this last meeting with um one of the senior managers I think I just walked out I said really yeah I just said what are you doing I've worked so hard on this and now you're pretty much going to split up my desk I said what do you think I'm going to do and I don't think they thought I'd do it um but I did and yeah I haven't looked back okay so let's talk about this. Let's talk about Laura Briggs, the, the business owner, because it is different, right? It is, oh, it is, yeah. it's completely different, right? It isn't, it isn't just a laptop and a phone 
yeah. There's a lot more to it, right? Yeah, Which before is, I started, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was that. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a common misconception, right? So I guess, did you, so did you have any, before you did this, right, was it, what, do you, was it the complete motivation of like, no, you know what, I've worked really hard um, and yeah, I don't want to give up things that I've worked hard for. That, that was the main driver for you to just take the leap, basically. Yes. So I think that's yeah. taking the plunge and making that decision is some of the, is, um, the hardest part, right? So that, that was the main motivator for you, yes. it seems like. Okay, cool. Did you have a plan? No, and I was going to say that was the that was the main thing that I would change if I went back. I I went into it thinking, oh, I have to leave my job. I can do this for myself, and I'm just going to, you know, I'll get a really basic website and I'll get an accountant and I'll just start working and see what happens. If anyone wanted to do it themselves, honestly, having a plan, a strategy is everything. You know that it wasn't until 18 months in that I realised I needed really? all that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I'd just been thinking, well, I just need to make money. I just need to make this work. I didn't think about what my brand was going to be like. I didn't think about what my, uh, you know, what activity I wanted to focus on, whether I had a growth plan. You know, it was just, you know, make money for what, myself. Why do, you th why do you think that didn't get to the top of the priority list until 18 months in? Probably because I didn't have this passion to start my own business. It was more of a a needs must yeah um and it wasn't until you know i got past that really shaky first six months where you're thinking oh god am i going to be okay and it, it was okay and then i was just coaching. Is that your covenants period as well yeah yeah six months i think yeah it was yeah. six months um and i just went you know this is really working but i have no i'm not answerable to anyone or anything um i don't have any sort of personal professional targets and I you know I'm just making things up as I go along and at that point that's when I sat down and I went I really need a strategy and it changed everything really yeah let's talk about those uh, that early period let's break this down into sort of the early period because I think that that's the part that people are most worried about mm. but how long how long did it take you to make your first placement a month I think really yeah, I decided to, I don't know how I decided to start working in Plymouth because I'd just done Bristol and um, and the surrounds when I worked for Reed, that's where I'm based. And Plymouth became really, really lucrative. I mean, if there's somewhere that they don't have a recruiter sort of monopolizing that market, then it was really easy to just start using LinkedIn and you can find accountants online. And you know, it's not difficult stuff. You need to just get people's emails or telephone numbers and start doing what you do. Um, and that's the thing I know some people's markets are different they're much more complicated than that um, but for me it was just I'm just going to crack on I, I know how to do this yeah, yeah yeah I'm sure that helped though right I, I mean a month, a month isn't too long right and then no. did, and then what and then was it was because normally what happens is month and then it might be like four months until the next one or something like that or did it just continue? really regular oh, okay really fair regular. enough that's, that's yeah. decent then yeah so how because I've had to go through this right and I think this is like how how did you deal with no one holding you accountable? But how did you find that? Oh, it's, it's tough because people used to say to me, oh, I could never work from home and by myself and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how you do it. And I was thinking, well, I find it really hard as well. You do get used to it, but it's just so unsettling. It's just, even when things are going right, it just it doesn't feel... It doesn't feel natural. And I think if I'd sat down and I had this plan and I had this vision of what the business was going to be and a real structure around what my business was, you know, I wasn't under Reed's sort of hat anymore. I was under my own and I didn't make anything out of that. You know, I had a logo and I had a Wix website and that was pretty much it. Um, but I think I would have had so much more self-belief um, mm. if I had, you know, sat down and got, right, what is Laura Briggs, the brand and how, what, what are we, what are we trying to achieve? What are you trying to achieve? Yeah. Mm. And, and and those early stages then Laura how did you deal with if, if any did you how, how did you deal with the self-doubt I think I just I just threw myself into it I I think I think I'm pretty I'm pretty resilient probably but I just knew that I wanted it to work and I knew that I really didn't want to go back to an agency people kept saying you know if it doesn't work out you can go back to an agency but once I made that first placement, oh, there's just, there is nothing like suddenly that, that money is just sat in your account. You're not just getting a, a you know, commission on your salary check. You, and it was like, it was like my job went from black and white to Technicolor. I just went, I have just shown that I can, yeah, people can pay me money for this. Yeah. yeah. 
doesn't feel real, does it? At the be- no, the <laughs> no, it's it, it, it's a pr- it's a pride that you don't even have on your biggest month when you work for an agency. Yeah. How, what was your support network like out of interest? Because I think that that's helped me a lot. And I think people going out on their own like that, it can be quite lonely. But what was your support network like? Did you have supportive friends, partner, whatever that you think helped? Yeah, so I um, I live with my fiance. So I had him around, although obviously the days are lonely. I tried working in cafes and things, but that didn't really work for me. Really? Um, but yeah, I think, I think because everybody was so shocked that I did it, that I was just, I think just being motivated to prove to people that Good I well. could... Yeah, I think so. That, yeah, it sounds really a really arrogant way of thinking, but I just, you know, you do, I, no one wants to fail. Mm. Okay. So what made what made you take a step back and basically think on the business, basically, which is what you did? Because I think when you are a, a business of you or a very small business, it's it's so easy to just get caught in what you're doing. You know what you need to do in the business. Yeah. But what what made you sort of go hang on a minute I do need to think about Laura Briggs the brand and what I'm trying to achieve here was there a particular moment or what drove that do you think yeah I was on holiday abroad last September and you know sometimes when you're not at home you can really put eyes on things and I just I was dreading going back home I knew that my work was it was coming in but I felt absolutely no enthusiasm about anything and I just started researching and I can't remember how I came, I came across you pretty early on though. I mean, okay. your personal branding thing was like a turning point. And I suddenly just realized, oh, I, you know, I need to brand myself and I need to, I know who I am and what's great about me, but nobody else knows. And my business just needs an injection of, you know, a bit of personality and some advertising. And that's when I got into all this personal branding. And then I started a big, big marketing project that has well has got me to where I am now really yeah because I, I think your website is awesome by the way I, oh, like, thanks. and no I like genuinely I, I, I do really believe that and I think um I think you're right especially when your name's attached to your business right sure like yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a, a person personal. yeah that's so what I mean that, that's what I mean so I guess let, let's talk about this so within so marketing was a big part so I'd love to sort of dig into that with you and because I think a lot of people do know it's important but have no idea where to start yeah. so I'd love to sort of talk to you about your journey with that but what else sort of coincided with that Laura what did you did you make that time to go okay well why am I doing this what what is the goal like do I want to grow do I not want to grow what am I did you also think about those things during that period as well yeah, at that point, I knew that I still didn't want to be a big business. I I've, I think a lot of my value was in being small. And I just thought it feels, feels like so much more risk when I've got a lot of growing still to do as a one man band to then think I'm going to start hiring people. And you've got so many other considerations once you've got a team. So I thought, you know, I really have a vision of, of what I can do by myself. And I started setting, you know, professional goals and tracking all this marketing activity and things with my website and you know I had a content plan and suddenly my weeks became so much more structured and everything just fell into place and you could do that from the beginning you know you don't have to you don't have to wait until you are you know completely lost your way like I had to do that Mm. that at the start so so how how did it what how did you start then let's just talk about that because I think a lot of people can be paralyzed by I have no idea where to start and these things but like by this point was 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 you doing everything like was you doing all the the accounts like did you was you using any other sort of resource or like what yeah everything was myself i yeah i had a i had what more of my accountants um doing my accounts and yeah that was it though no, no, i did everything myself and I, I enjoyed that because sometimes it's nice to have a break from recruitment you know do some sort of you know admin or yeah. that kind of thing so i was i was happy to do it um but this was just a shift to to include marketing in there and i can't tell you like marketing yourself is as important as the recruitment itself it's it's crazy how much it's changed things so how did you start? How did you start the journey then? Because I'm sure that you would have been like, right, where do I start? What, what, did, you, what did you start with? Genuinely, 
it's not just because you're here. I genuinely think I found, I stumbled across you and that's when personal branding was sort of I, the first time I learned about it. Okay. So I started researching that. I then thought, well, if I'm going to have a personal brand, I need to be shouting about it. And there'd been this really cool design agency in Bristol that I wanted to work with at the start to get my logo, but I just couldn't afford them. And I thought I'm going to get an absolutely smashing website done by them so I created this brand I did all the background work I learned from you about content marketing what about let's just the background work what sort of things did you do what do you mean so you said did all the background work before oh sure the, yeah what sort of I, things I looked at how you build a brand so you know looking at you know your business vision and your strategy and your individual goals that are going to get you there and how you're going to market yourself and what your what your brand personality is and how you want pe your customers to see you awesome basically just create just created Laura Briggs this <laughs> Laura Briggs the brand um, and I really got behind it and because it's yourself you're not having to create something you were just saying all the things that I'm good at I want to be able to you know I want people mm. to buy into that and how what how like I've done that for myself but like how did that help you because I think sometimes they're, they're questions that people don't make the time to ask like how do I want my customers to feel when I work with them and what is my vision like how did that did that how did that help you it is, it's, it's definitely, it's not something that you, you can just sit down and, and come up with. But I think over the course of, you know, maybe a month or so of just thinking, what is it that I really focus on? What is different about my service? And why do the people who work with me come back to me? Well, it's, you know, because I'm a specialist, I'm really good at what I do. I'm nice to work with. I'm not pushy. Um, I'm very personable. And that, helps you know once you've got that down suddenly it's much easier to think oh this is what my business is yeah i love that and it, for me that it, it, it's just i don't know i think it's just so important just to know wh what the vision is for me that that's just always helps when you have those days which it's difficult or you're having challenges or whatever it's just great to have that anchor point and actually make the time to think about it yeah um so okay and learn about content marketing great and then obviously engage with this design agency and then what you started the website the website project yeah, so the website was, it was, a, it was a, a real expense for me, but I just, you know, I just had faith that this was what was going to propel me. And the idea was that I was going to do content marketing on LinkedIn that was going to drive people to my website. They were yeah. going to love my website. I had free resources that I created that they could sign up to an email list. I was then, you know, doing blogs every week that would get sent to my email list. Um, and that way I was going to get people to know and trust and and like me and that was going to bring in sort of more business to me sort of proactively love that how long did it take for the website to be done what how long did that project take uh it started at the end of november and finished mid-january to had the launch mid-january and i had you know i had like a professional photo shoot like it was so out of my comfort zone but it just i just knew i was doing the right thing really yeah what, so was it just was it just that internal dialogue that helped you do that because that is that isn't that isn't yeah a lot of people are uncomfortable with that was it just like i know i'm doing the right but you had no one to tell you you were doing the right thing no but you were writing things on on linkedin that were basically saying look stop talking about your jobs no one cares about <laughs> your jobs they care about you and if they like you and they trust you and you talk about the way that you do things that is what was going to want to make them work with you not oh i have a job um, mm. And that, I just knew as soon as I read that, that was exactly where I was going wrong. Okay. So that was, was that January this year? Or yes, was that January? Yeah, yeah, January this year, the website launched. Yeah. How did it go? Oh, it's, yeah, been amazing. It's been amazing. Like, I think the first LinkedIn post that I did after launching, I got like a hun over a hundred likes on it. Mm. And so all these messages and people going to the website and so much good feedback. And I just thought, God, if that's day one, you know, this is, this is totally going to be worth it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, so like, how did you, obviously you have, I'm, I'm assuming before that you wasn't sharing much content at all. Not at all. 
No, really? I, I'm one of those people who, you know, even when I used to have a Facebook account, like I'd never do a status, you know, it's really, I'm really, you know, a bit more of a shrinking violet online. Um, but I decided that I was going to do a blog post that I would post to LinkedIn every Thursday. Um, that was like a, you know, a question and then me answering it and then doing a blog post about it. And then on a Tuesday, I was going to do something that was either, you know, something that happened to me, something that was relevant to business, something that was talking about stuff that I understood about clients or candidates, something that was personable um and that's been my that's been my strategy ever since really nice yeah. love that what what's what's happened since you've done this that you didn't expect well one i'm so much more invested in my business i'm much prouder of it even though i was you know always doing well now it's a business that i feel proud of love that um and yeah i i guess the other thing is that people come to me I don't chase down work anymore. Like it, people just email me wanting help or they want me to work their jobs or, and that is just, you know, I get lots of recommendations. That is, that is the dream. I think really as a recruiter, not to have to do, do a lot of the chasing. Mm. How long, and how long did you, did that take? Do you think like for you to get to a point where you, I don't know if you get regular sort of people saying, Hey Laura, can you help or whatever? Like how long did that actually take? Probably about four months. I mean, really? it was it was a bit strange because obviously um, the the pandemic and lockdown and everything hit. Um, but that's the thing; I I haven't felt it at all. It's it's been fine. Really. Mm. Okay, so four months. I mean, that's still a good amount of time. It's a time that I will speak to people about in terms of. I mean, that's a long enough time to give it a real good go. How something that I always get, Laura, and I'm keen to get your thoughts on this because I've seen your posts and, and some of them are personal, very human, which is great. How have you dealt with any negativity? You mean comments wise? Yeah. Because people have... people are always worried about that when I when I speak to people, they're 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 really worried about getting buried online. Yeah, but you're not there to be controversial. You're there to be relatable. You know, that you sell by creating some sort of emotion in people by either them going, oh, that is exactly how I feel. Or yeah, I, I get that. Or oh, I feel strongly about that. You aren't trying to be, oh, I'm just going to say something that's going to get people talking. And I think if you have an opinion that you think might be controversial, you follow up with a, you know, this is what I think. Do you think the same? Am I wrong about this? You know, I think just be a little bit more humble. Mm. Fair. So you, it hasn't really phased you. I don't. Think, I don't think I'm putting out stuff that <laughs> that people could really kick back at very much. I have a yeah. couple. See, so occasionally get the grump, grumpy old uh, director or something commenting. <laughs> Who cares about that? <laughs> That's fair enough. So, um, so what what would your advice be then to people listening that that will know this is important and know branding is important, but have no idea where to start they're not not sure what to do like just from your learnings and the journey that you've been on what what would your advice be do you think so i would say that you just want to create a you just want to be a three-dimensional recruiter you're not somebody who just churns out jobs you are someone with a personality and everyone has a personality so you can just start on linkedin you know that everyone that you want is on linkedin start talking about things that aren't jobs um talk about the way that you do recruitment um talk about what you love about your job um you know a candidate that you've spoken to um anything that is very yeah relatable and and real and you just you just have to be honest and and also not worry too much about the numbers because at first you can think oh god my, my post didn't get enough likes it wasn't worth it but people will see it and you just you just need to persevere okay and how how does this now fit in your sort of weekly week then, Laura, compared to getting on the phone, building relationships? Like what, I don't know, how, if you were to split your week into like percentages, like, because I think this is the part I always speak to people about building your brand, et cetera, isn't to replace the phone, in my opinion. It, it just isn't that. It's about adding it to your toolbox of skills and having a yeah multi-channel approach to building your desk and your mm. business. Yeah. So like what, what's what been your experience of that and how have you like how do you tend to split your week because clearly you're doing a lot of content you're invested in it it's, it's working for yeah. you but how have you made it fit into your week or everything else that you're doing and yeah how does that look, look like? Uh, I would probably say content is probably about 35% of it 
but I've always mm. seen it as, you know, if, if I, if I get the right people invested in me, then I, I can do the rest of it. That's, you know, the recruitment isn't the involved or difficult side of things. It's, it's, it's finding people. Um, and so I think because of, how much easier it's made things during the lockdown um, and how many people have come to me I've realized the value of you know I really do need to keep investing that at least a third of my time in marketing yeah. myself okay interesting so let, let's talk about the last couple of months then mm. what, what was you worried going into it yeah I, I'd had a few uh, quite a few good months before so I what I just thought you know I can ride this out it's it's not a great, great situation but then I just, so I just decided I'm going to step back from this. I, I want to be sensitive. I don't think this is the right time to be contacting, you know, businesses who might be struggling. And, um, but people kept contacting me saying I've been made redundant. And so I'd send out the, you know, speak to um, clients or send, send them emails that were very sensitive in nature that I understood that I didn't want this to land wrong. Um, I didn't want to come across the wrong way, but I was helping people who've been made redundant. And the response was brilliant. I think they liked the fact that I was, you know, being aware of what was going on, but accountancy was still sort of running you know not all firms were busy but plenty of them were and I think once I'd been placing a few people people knew that I was still open for business and yeah everything just just ticked along really so you just did the right thing again it's just it's just thinking with your head isn't it just sometimes not being oh I'm a salesperson and this is what I do it's going you know is this the right time to be emailing someone or if I have to contact somebody at the moment how am I going to go about it in a way that you know shows them that I understand that you know there are bigger things going on at the moment yeah. being empathetic just being a human yeah doing the right it goes like it, it's it's just that's been one of the, my biggest learnings over the last year and a bit is like that goes so far in business yeah like it really it really does like it it resonates with people people um like to work with people that feel like they understand them and it's actually it can be one of your biggest assets <laughs> definitely and you sometimes it's the smallest thing that you do or say that makes people think oh that's just a bit different like I've never heard it I've never had a recruiter say that or do that and suddenly you're you know propelled up in their estimation and you know it's, it really is the little things how did you feel? Because I know we spoke about this. Like, obviously, unfortunately, there's been uh, loads of people made redundant, um, people on furlough, which comes with its own challenges. Like, as a, a business of just Laura and you, like, how, what, where was your head at? I don't know. How has it made you feel about having your own business, do you think, during this period? Well, uh, just just knowing that people I still know at Reed, so many of them have been furloughed, and I guess it's I guess it's just luck because I would be in exactly the same situation um, if if I was still at an agency. Um, but that's the thing, you know, you have so much more freedom um, within a business to either step back or carry on going, or you know, you you know, you're dancing to the beat of your own drum. Mm. Yeah, that, that's that's definitely because so, because I, I think that you always hear about read any business book. It's normally around growing your business, scaling, all these things. But I think the last couple of months has really shown to me that there's there's a lot of value in being a nimble, agile, small business, right? Yeah, I, w I would hate anybody to be sitting there thinking, oh, if I start a recruitment business, you know, because I probably sat in an agency thinking if I start my own recruitment business, you know, it's, I've got to be able to grow a business. You don't, you can have a really lucrative, really successful, really enjoyable recruitment business just yourself. And you always have the option to grow it if you want, want to, but I've just been finding it so rewarding so far. Never say never, but... Is, it, is that been the main reason why you have, you have decided to, or well, yeah, why you, it is still just you, do you think? It's so flexible and it depends, you know, I know people who they just, you know, went in their garden shed for the first two years and they just worked and they, you know, hired people and they built and that just isn't for me. And I don't feel that that, you know, is any reflection on me. I'm just, I'm just different and I want to be successful in a different way. And I want to, I want my work to be flexible as well. Yeah, no, I love that. How have you, during this, you as a business owner then, Laura, have you, have you, made time to invest in yourself like because you seem as so, you seem someone that's got resilience you've got a, a good head on your shoulders like I don't know I th like how what's that journey been like in terms of mindset because that's that's a big part of going out on your own doing these things like have you made time to always invest in Laura and yourself or what, what's been your journey with that 
Um, yeah, I don't. I don't I think with with your business sort of coming together that that becomes part of your identity I know that it shouldn't but you know if you have you have your own business that a certain confidence comes from having done that um but I don't know I think some of it's some of it's tough I think when I've really been shaken is is when you know you're treated badly by clients and I've actually had a few wobbles where I've thought you know maybe recruitment isn't for me you do have to be quite thick-skinned um but I've got much better at walking away from things that aren't you know I can choose who I work with now I think that's the thing when you're in an agency you just think I have to deal with every every yeah. bone I get thrown and you don't and as a you know when you're working for yourself you have to be a bit kinder you have to say look if, if that person's causing me stress it's, it's not worth it you don't work for anything because mm. that, that's what I was gonna that was gonna be my next question for you like what what have been the biggest challenges for you since doing this like what what so yeah de dealing with customers that stressed you out or it's been difficult but like what, what have been what have been some of the challenges that you've had to overcome do you think or the biggest ones yeah I think I think being small sometimes people could feel that they can take advantage of you um I I <laughs> having really really watertight terms and going about everything in a really meticulous way I've learned from a couple of couple of sticky situations there um but I don't know. I, it's just one of those things you, you naturally grow and become more business savvy and, um, you know, with a better idea of what's serving you and what isn't. And there's no, there aren't necessarily those points along the way that, you know, completely change the way you do things, but it, it's just running your own business. It is just a natural growth curve. Yeah. It's interesting to say about terms of business, cause that's such like a really practical, but it comes up a lot. I've had quite a few messages around that how did you make sure that they did become watertight was it just in, in engaging with a, a proper lawyer and doing that rather because no one typically you would I've always spoke to people on on here a couple of times and been like yeah I've never had to put together terms of business that was a learn that I had to go through like <laughs> yeah but you will um you'll have obviously used terms that you're uh, agency uses and to be honest they all read the same um, my dad had some that he'd been he's a finance director so he had some from other agencies and I just compared them and they all had exactly the same clauses but then when it came to using them I had a couple of situations where I think I was taken advantage of by firms and when I went to see a specialist recruitment lawyer he was then able to advise me on how to send things what to say and what clauses to include but i still think in law recruitment is uh massively disadvantaged so you've just got to be very careful about the way you work and and that yeah probably just got a few stung stung maybe two or three times by that in the first year or two yeah yeah okay interesting so what how how are you viewing the so it's been obviously since January that you had this big project that obviously now we've gone through COVID. Like how are you, how are you viewing the next six to 12 months? What, what's, what does the future look like? That's a really good question. Just more, I'm just enjoying it now. So I, I spoke to a client the other day who said, you know, you, you could be hiring people, you know, now that you have a brand and this works and you know, people buy into it, there's no reason you couldn't hire people. And I was like, just couldn't. <laughs> But <laughs> that was my head exploding. <laughs> um, I just thought, yeah, I, I could do that. And I wasn't in a position to do it before because I, you know, was just somebody who still felt like I, you know, had that laptop on the phone. But now my business feels a lot more tangible. And that's what I'm going to be thinking about on this holiday when I get Love away. That. I do all my strategizing. <laughs> well, what's, what's made it feel more tangible? Because now it's got like it's that's the thing a brand makes your business more than just a bank account and a series of emails yeah now if i said laura briggs recruitment you know you can google me you can look at my google reviews you can see me on maps you can look at my website you can read my content you can sign up to my mailing list um and i have created like a personality around who i am and what i do and if somebody was to join me now i would know how to induct them into that if that makes yeah, sense okay, i would yeah. just be like right you need a laptop and a phone just just get on the, just get on the <laughs> phone <laughs> yeah yeah i know what you mean what 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 just just out of interest if like anything that you're worried about to when hiring someone do you think 
Yeah, I think, well, I've heard that um, managing people is mostly just dealing with people's personal <laughs> personal shit. So, okay. you know, like half of it is doing the job and half of it is, you know, everything else. And I think you could open a, a can of worms, but that is the only way to really, you know, further your business. You know, beyond, I've got a finite amount of time, but you yeah. know, to really go further in business, you, you need other people working for you as well. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's probably the next challenge. And have you managed people before? No, never. And it's never appealed to me at all. I think I'm quite, uh, you know, I'm a lone wolf. I just yeah. <laughs> like, do, you know, getting on with my own thing. But I, yeah, I think I could do it. Love that. I like, 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 like to think I'd be a good manager. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. All right. um, what I was going to say, so just, just out of interest as well, like it's something that I obviously, how have you dealt with, like when you work for reading in, in an agency, you have people to celebrate wins with. You have people to say, hey, I've done this. What do you think? Or whatever. Like, how has that been for you? Because I, I've, I've had to, I mean, I've gone out of my way to, to lean on people and they've acted as mentors in a way. But like, what, what's that been like for you? And have you met or engaged or built relationships with anyone that has sort of given you that outlet or have you not? No, I didn't at all. And it's only since I did this rebrand and I've had people I don't even know reaching out to me and, that you know, just being so complimentary about the things that I'm doing. But before then, I remember my fiancé used to say to me, um, you know, oh, you've made a placement, shall we, you know, celebrate? And I'd say, well, do you celebrate now? Do you celebrate when they hand in the notice? Do you celebrate when they start? Do you celebrate after their three-month probation period? So I just never... I, you know and even a year in you're thinking okay I've done a good year but can I do another good year it's yeah I I, I think I'm very I'm very cautious by nature do, do you find it hard to give yourself credit yeah probably because the things that you're good at are the things that just you don't have to work very hard to do you know I focus on the things that I'm not so good at and I think you know um one of my my friend's husband he started like a really successful recruitment business and it's like turnover in the millions now and you think is that what I should be I really had a bit of soul searching where I said just because that's not what I want it doesn't mean that what I have isn't great you know I'm really proud of what I have and I I do have a very successful business it's just it's only me yeah, no, I, I love that. I think, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this before, but it always resonates with me when I hear it, but comparison is the thief of joy, right? So uh, you can always get caught in that, can't you? You can always get caught in, oh, wow, they look like they're, and especially in like, as a recruitment business, like, oh, they've got all these people, they're doing well, blah, blah, blah. But with that, they're all, they're completely different headaches that you won't be dealing with right now. And it's, sure. it's not as, do you know what I mean? But I find that hard as well to give, myself credit i've been in those situations where my girlfriend would be like right let's go out for dinner celebrate and i'm like yeah but i don't know it just feels a bit weird doesn't it <laughs> yeah. i find it hard it's, yeah. di it's difficult and i think i don't know i think i'm very mindful of it I, I think i'm very mindful of not getting caught up in off my own supply basically because I, I think it's just really important to stay grounded yes you should let people praise you and that's great but i don't know i think when you, I, i'm just always aware of getting caught in people bigging me up and I live like that's I don't know I'm, I'm just very wary of that yeah and I, I think it depends it depends what resonates with you as well for me I mean being a recruiter placements just become you know they are they are how you make money how you invest in your business they don't become oh my goodness every time I make some money that's a cause for celebration I think for me it's much more it's people it's feedback from people people saying that they love working for me my google reviews are my happy place you know those kind of things um and I yeah I just think that's a reflection of of you know the fact that I want a business that you know, I want, want to be someone that people enjoy working with. So when I hear that, that's my affirmation. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, cool. So look, before we finish, I just wanted to, to say and, and ask you what, what are you, well, actually, no, what, what I wanted to get your thoughts on before we finish is how do you think the sort of land's going to lay six to 12 months from now during the COVID period, there's going to be a lot of changes like what are you keeping your eye on or what what do you think or what are your thoughts on what the future of recruitment might look like in the next six, 12 months? Because from what I can see, I think there's going to be a lot of changes which are going to be interesting. But anything that sort of you notice picking up on or seeing that you're interested to see how it plans out? 
I think if anyone's thinking about going off on their own, I think now is the time to do it. I think the focus on recruitment is going to be less on, you know, it's easy, you can chuck CVs around, you know, you work for a big agency and, you know, you, it's just easy to be a, a top biller. I think now it's going to be much more about the quality of your service. You know, the devil is in the detail, everything from the way you write your job adverts to the, you know, the whole client experience when, when somebody works with you, you know, not just the end result, did you make a placement, but how did I make them feel? Would they come back to me loyalty I think that is I think I hope we're going to turn our reputation as recruiters around just because we're all much more aware of that yeah I think it's a great point that you raise because I think if you're not those things that you just said the chances of you surviving the last three four months I'd like to think are quite slim right because I think I think a lot of people from what I can see anyway there's a lot of people that are passionate about recruitment like you are and changing the reputation and doing the right thing before we went into COVID for sure. But there's still a lot of people that just, you'll know this more than me because you've probably come up against it, but people just sending CVs and it's still very transactional and delivering a shit service to clients and candidates. But I feel like the last three, four months has probably sped up those people not existing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Cause you're right. It's like, if you're not those things and you're not a consultant during this period, what sort of relationships are you going to form or have coming out of it? Like, do you know what I mean? So I, I think it's sped all of that up, I think. Yeah, there's, there's just been a magnifying glass on recruitment, I think, because so many more people are made redundant, so many businesses are failing. I just think we've really, this is a good chance for us to step up our game and for the people who, who are different to, to really stand out. Yeah, for sure. So look, Laura, absolute pleasure. I did all right, didn't I? <laughs> oh no, we're still we're still on camera. Don't <laughs> celebrate yet. <laughs> but um, just, just parting words, really. I guess yeah. I know you sort of touched on it, but parting words for people listening. Um, it could be anything around starting their going out, starting their own recruitment business, or just being a recruiter. Sort of, what would you say to the people if they'd listen to Laura Briggs and they take on your advice? What What would you say? I'd say get on the content strategy, you know, start writing stuff that isn't jobs. Um, up, up your job advert writing game because that's everything. And uh, yeah, if you're thinking about leaving, definitely do it. I would definitely have done it sooner if I, if I you know, with hindsight. Laura, thank you. Thank you.